I'm sorry to tell you, but Neil deGrasse Tyson is right. In the past 48 hours, the USA horrifically lost 34 people to mass shootings. On average, across any 48 hours, we also lose 500 to medical errors, 300 to the flu, 250 to suicide, 200 to car accidents, 40 to homicide via handgun. Often our emotions respond more to spectacle than to data. Do you agree with that? Let me know in the comments. His tweet and the angry replies was likely an exercise in itself because a tweet talking about emotions and emotional reactions being overriding in our responses and how we take in the information. He gets a ton of emotional responses overriding logic and how we've received the information. So a practice in itself, I don't know, but it certainly seems that way given what the responses were. Here's a, here's a few of the most angry slash popular ones that I could see. Imagine getting murdered only to have this effing guy go up to your friends and family and tell them, you know, statistically around 50 people died of heart disease during this funeral alone. Next one, 18 years ago we had a single shoe bomber who didn't kill anyone. We completely altered airport screening for the country. Maybe we should respond to handgun deaths with that kind of urgency. Maybe posting this as a slap in the face to 34 families planning funerals. Last one, no one, no one person caused 500 medical errors, 200 vehicle deaths, committed suicides, killed 40 people, one a-hole with a high-powered rifle killed 20 in El Paso. See the effing difference. Now here's the thing about these responses. They're all emotional responses, which already means, in my eyes, that they've lost. The, they've lost the battle of wits here when you respond to somebody saying, everybody's emotional, and then you respond emotionally. But they're all emotional responses, and they seem to have expectations tied to them that are driven, that they're, sorry, they, they all seem to have expectations tied to them driven by emotion, policy expectations, governmental expectations, governing expectations, all tied to emotional responses. The first one now, your response to him saying people get emotional is to have an extreme emotional reaction. He, he's not going up, he's not tagging anyone in this post, he's not saying your deaths are less important. It's nothing to do with that. It's just that if you want to say it's bad timing, then sure. But if anyone was looking for to Neil deGrasse Tyson to be comforted, comforted by these deaths, that is not a good thing to do. So is he going up and telling people this? No. The second person's emotional reaction is to respond to handgun deaths. But if we were to apply this person's logic, that they seem to be reporting here to something like Islamic terrorism, or they were speaking of 9-11, even crashes in general. It's probably not an answer the person wants to hear. Given that they disagree with this, they probably don't want to hear uh, ban planes from coming from certain countries, ban people from certain countries because they did the violence. It's not something that person probably wants to hear. The third being, yes, one person did all this. So your solution is to punish all other people for this one person's crimes. People aren't going to follow the law just because there's laws on the books. Criminals do not follow the law inherently. On Twitter, there is no nuance, it seems. Just one person one-upping the other. More clever than the last. I have a better wit. I'm more quick-witted. I have access to Google better than you do. Thinking they all have the solutions. High-powered rifles, semi-automatic rifles, assault rifles. Most people don't know the differences unless you've been in the military or maybe played a lot of first-person shooters. These are just words that people throw out there. These terms are used by people to push gun control. Whether you're for or you're against it, this is the reality. Just like people say that gun-free zones are where mass murders happen or where terrorist attacks happen, people use the inverse to push gun control. It's it's not a bad thing, but it's it's something that's that people pretend isn't the reality. You want to say that this is a problem, this is why we need to do it, fine. What you don't need to do is act as if everybody who disagrees with you is a monster and everybody who doesn't see that, uh, you know, high-powered gas rifles, semi-automatic, blah, 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 are words used to further their narrative. Because let me tell you something. Some people purport semi-automatic bans, and to some people that means big, bad rifles and machine guns. But machine guns are already banned, and semi-automatic would mean literally everything. So I just want people to use 
fair rules and apply them evenly across the board. And what Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying is that we don't put the same emotions into day-to-day -day tragedies. Rather, what we do is we take the sensationalized ones that, that can be used to further any agenda any which way. And what we have to do is question the media sources that are giving this information to us, because if you're going to name yourself a news organization, you can't cherry pick one thing or the other that we're supposed to feel bad about. One could be more high profile if it's a different person or in a different situation, yes. But just look at the headlines out of Chicago. And I know some people are going to be like, oh my God, Chicago. People always use that. Four killed, 43 wounded. Seven killed, 46 wounded Chicago weekend shootings. You can use any example you want. But it is evidence that the news media and Twitter hawks only seem to pay attention to things that the news media presents to them, who present only things for an emotional reaction to further some sort of narrative or agenda. That's just the facts. I follow these people. It's all down, it's all down the same line. If it can't be, if the deaths in Chicago can't be used to further my opinion on gun control, I'm not going to use it. If the deaths in New Orleans can't be used to say white people are bad, I'm not going to use it. In, and it doesn't matter which argument you're doing. It's these news networks, these personalities, these faux journalists, and I say that because of examples we've already seen. If you can't use it, then we're not going to use it. If we can't use it to push what we want to push, that's why independent media is so much better. Because you know the person. You get to know the personality. Instead of people screaming, screaming white supremacy while seemingly not caring about limitless black guys being shot. Why is that? Tell me. Why do they focus on what Trump says about Baltimore, not about Baltimore itself? Why do we focus on these shootings, but not wall-to-wall -wall coverage of St. Louis or Chicago or Baltimore or DC, where people are getting shot a lot? Much higher rates than any of these mass shootings. Yes, it all happened at once. It's bad. It's scary. But why aren't we focusing on this? Do they just not care? Do they think it's expected in the cities? Is it a racial thing? Are we expecting this to happen because it's a certain race of people? Do they not want Democrats to look bad because they run these cities and have for 30, 40, 50 years? I'm talking St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, Baltimore. This is the reality. I'm sorry to tell you. Or do we just not even want to help? Is that what it is? It's not important enough for us to help because we can't get any political points. These are the questions that need to be asked, and this is why I don't have any time for emotional arguments from Joy Reid or from Chris Cuomo, who I have to see in the change room at the gym, pretending. It's either pretending or it's not caring. It's either pretending or lying. Pretending that there's no differing, uh, differentiating variables at play here. Pretending it's all white supremacy. The one guy was a white supremacist, but let's forget about the person who talked about left-wing stuff. Let's forget about the Antifa and the Elizabeth Warren. Let's forget about all that stuff. Let's pick the stories that make us look most correct and just be like, I'm just asking questions. Why, as Chris Cuomo, do I have a responsibility to, you know, take a look at both sides because you're presenting yourself as if you're not taking sides. That's why. It's disgusting to me. It's why I don't respect these networks in general. There are some redeeming people on these. Usually on their, they're usually tweeting out stories at three in the morning because they don't really want you to see the, see what there actually is, is going on, you know? But if you're a news network, you can't be picking favorites, but they do it all the time. And when they do it, it's okay. Trump got white supremacist rhetoric, but forget about the guy who shot the, the Republican representative. White's pushing, <laughs> Trump's pushing white terrorism. Forget about the Bernie Sanders guy who shot somebody or was it a stabbing on a bus? I don't remember. Did we blame Bernie Sanders for that? Did we call him a terrorist supporter? He's uplifting terrorists with his rhetoric of free things. No. And then you get people who say like, oh, the white supremacist is, is the base. So you're comfortable with saying that like 50 million people in America are white supremacists. Good for you. They all voted for a black president, though. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is we take all these things in. We take all these tragedies in and we try to pin them on somebody. But we only do that 
if it's something that can further what we want. We only choose the stories that can further our narrative, our uh, push for certain legislation. And if somebody doesn't agree with that, we pair. It's like when uh, Ben Shapiro was on Piers Morgan, standing on the graves of the kids. If we can pair this tragedy with gun control or immigration or whatever it might be, too many Cinnabons as I try to make light of this very serious topic. If we can pair it with something that we need to push, then who cares? Who cares about Chicago? Who cares about St. Louis? And my problem is, why is it okay when one side does it, but it's not okay when the other side does it? Please, somebody tell me.